Hi, it's Mike with Utastic. I'm here at GoToConf 2014. I'm sitting here with Jez Humble, who today uh, presented on DevOps, and uh, he's got a background as the co-author of the Continuous Delivery book, and uh, he also was working on another book that we'll get it to in a minute. But also, uh, you know, and also, and also, you're a busy person. Uh, he's working on a new conference called FlowCon. Uh, but first, you know, thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Thanks for having me. Uh, your talk today was on DevOps. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about what what part of DevOps and what do you what does DevOps is one of those terms that means a lot of things to different people. You helped write the book on on continuous delivery, which helped lead into kind of what we call DevOps. So can you tell us a little bit about what that means to you and how that relates to your talk today? Yeah, so I mean, which is a very big question, yeah. um, and debate rages on how to define DevOps and what DevOps really is. Um, but for me, ultimately, DevOps is about uh, creating a culture in which we're always learning how to get better at right. uh, creating and evolving and operating uh, great products and services, mm -hmm. um, uh, with a particular focus on uh, collaboration between all the different people involved in doing that, whether that's the engineers, the mm -hmm. UX people, the operations people, um, uh, and all the various groups who are involved in doing that. So it isn't just about deploying, it's about the whole application cycle from from code writing to delivery. Yeah, and you know, even outside that cycle, I mean, you, well, the point of continuous delivery is to give you this capability to be able to get changes out fast mm -hmm. to users in a low risk way, uh, and to make it economic to work in small batches. But once you have that capability, the question then becomes, mm -hmm. what do you do with it? Um, and there, you know, I think you know the people in the DevOps field will tell you that you use that for creating a feedback loop, so that you can make sure that you're working on the right things, right. so that you're building things that actually delight users and improve the customer experience. And so it kind of feeds into that whole discussion around mm -hmm. making building things that are delightful and better serve our customers. Right. And is that what your, your your goal of your talk was today? Actually, what was the title of the talk? So the title it of the talk... It was a long one. It was. <laughs> you have a uh, lot of very long titles. I do, yeah. Sorry account. about that. Uh, so yeah, DevOps, Culture, and Practices to Create Flow. DevOps, Culture, and Practices to Create Flow. And Flow being... Flow being being able to get ideas out to users as quickly as possible. Okay. So it's, I mean, the, the question of the thing that is actually doing the flowing was right. kind of the premise for the talk, right? Because I go back to the Toyota production system and the idea of flow in the context of the Toyota production system is, you know, the customer puts in an order, mm -hmm. I want this car, how fast can you get it to them? Right. So there's this kind of idealized concept of one piece flow of being able to go from customer order all the way through to delivering the vehicle mm -hmm. as a single piece of flow with no kind of interruptions and queues or anything like that. Um, which you know is unachievable, but you're, the idea is that you're always moving towards that. And so the idea is, what's the equivalent of that in the context of software development? Uh, and so my contention is that what you what we should be looking at is check-ins, creating builds, and trying to get those builds out to users mm -hmm. as fast and as safely as possible. And, and how do you actually do that? Okay, and uh, and, and and some people that is even. At the at the very beginning of, of how to write software is a controversial topic right now with TDD. Right. You know, CDD dead. Like we can't even agree on how to write software, much less how to finally get something to to that end user. Uh, is that something you've been experienced or having conversations about, like trying to figure out those kind of things with your teams? And yeah, absolutely. I mean, well, one of the things that again I said in the talk, and I also say in the book, and to anyone who listened to me, frankly, is that you've got to build quality into the products. Mm -hmm. So the idea that you can somehow write some code and then there's like a quality activity a bit further down where you right. find out it's any good, that doesn't work. Um, or you have like a separate quality team. It's the responsibility of the people building the software to build quality in. And one of the ways that you do that is through TDD um, okay. by making sure the developers are responsible for uh, writing the tests that show that their software does what users want. Right. Uh, and what they expect of it. Uh, I mean, TDD is a whole other topic in its own right. And, you know, one of the things for me about TDD is, um, you know, going back to the idea of satisfying the user. What we do in TDD is we put ourselves, it forces us to put ourselves in the perspective of the user of the software. Right. The first thing you do when you write a test is, you know, for when you're starting TDD for a new module or component or class or function, uh, you think about, 
what's the API? Because you have to write a test against an API that doesn't exist yet. Right. So you're designing that API, which puts you in the perspective of the user. Yeah. And that, for me, is a really important point of TDD. It forces developers to think as a consumer of the software they're about to build yeah. and design an API that's simple to use and simple to test. So you so, get that pain early that, like, whoa, what, what comes here? Right. And actually, once you've worked out the right test to write, actually writing the code that implements that should be relatively easy. Mm -hmm. The hard bit is working out what the test should look like. Um, right. and, and so that, I think, actually is very, uh, you know, there's a very lean aspect of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, just, you know, jumping straight over into, you alluded to a book that you're working on. Is this also in the same vein of, of topic, or is this, what is the book? So the book is called Lean Enterprise, okay. and the book is about how large companies can innovate uh, at scale. Okay. Uh, and so, excuse me, <coughs> pardon me. The problem that we had with the continuous delivery book is we talk about the technical practices and the principles behind them. Um, but organizations have trouble implementing it. And we see it time and time again. People say, oh, we'd love to do this, but we can't because of our, <coughs> excuse me again, uh, we can't because of our architecture or because of governance or because of compliance or because of our budgeting process. And so, and the book tries to address the whole ecosystem of innovation. How do you build and grow a company that can innovate at scale? You know, big companies who don't treat IT as a competitive advantage mm -hmm. uh, find it very hard. I mean, IT ends up being the critical path right. because there's no investment in it. It's treated as an, you know, an order team. Yeah, cost center, an order taking function, and then you know it takes ages to get anything done because it has to follow all these rules. Imagine if your software actually was a competitive advantage to your business. Right. Uh, how would you do things differently? And of course, there are companies who do do that. Uh, you know, Netflix and Google um, and uh, all these other kind of companies that are doing this stuff at scale. Mm -hmm. uh, actually treat software as part of the product development process, and it's central to how they innovate. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's kind of exploring how enterprises can adopt that culture. And I, I can see how some of this, all of these things can be daunting for somebody who's adopting them, because even even these terms, lean, flow, um, um, and I'm forgetting the other one, uh, but they, they have multiple meanings yeah. in different contexts. Like yeah. when you described flow, my first earlier, when you described flow, I was thinking about developer flow, yeah. and then you're talking about product flow, and it's is it, it been something that's been a challenge making sure that people understand these terms that have been used in different contexts that they understand the context of what you're talking about? Yeah, I mean it's a huge problem. Uh, mm -hmm. Even understanding the concepts and understanding the names, and then understanding how they fit together, and you know people make basic mistakes with this stuff and it you know again it's not because they're stupid it's right. because it's genuinely difficult yeah. and counterintuitive a lot of people think that lean is about cutting costs uh, lean is not about cutting costs lean is about reducing waste and by reducing waste we end up with lower costs but you don't just go about looking for expensive things and cut them out of the budget right right but, but people do that people are like well we're going to go lean that means yeah. we're going to reduce our headcount yeah. and we'll actually know that's not the case and again if you look at toyota I mean, in Japanese culture, until quite recently, everybody had a job for life. So you could never fire anyone. So the idea with Lean was that you would increase productivity by, you know, making people more efficient at what they did and more effective at what they did. And that frees up people to work on higher value things instead. Uh, and what they would do is they would use the efficiency gains they got through applying new principles to drive the growth of the company. Because right. those people who are doing all this low-level stuff are now freed up to do high-level stuff, right. and now we can do more stuff. And so that means we can expand our market or introduce new products. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it gives you the power to do all these additional things, whereas a lot of people adopting Lean, they think it's about, you know, making people redundant and firing them so we can right. reduce costs. Right. No, absolutely not. That's totally not the point. But, you know, this is just one of many misconceptions. Yeah. And it's very counterintuitive. And it's and it's even this is a, a word that has come up in a lot of interviews is empathy, um, you know, trying to put your mind into the, the listener's mind, um, and, and that's that's always a trick, you know. Here we're doing these interviews, it's trying to to take what are my own biases. Like when I hear lean, I'm a developer, so I'm thinking. I mean, I'll flow. I'm thinking developer flow. Uh, so um, when you're when you're at these presentations, do you often get people that are 
or when you're talking these topics, do you often get people surprised or pushed back or expecting something different and and have to be brought back into the fold or yeah. resistant? All, all the time. I mean, yeah. because uh, you know, uh, people come up and they you know they expect me also to be a continuous delivery guy. We need to be talking yeah. about these very technical things. And I found that the technical stuff is not the problem. The right. problem is leadership and culture and so i tend to talk about those things these days uh and you know i've been doing a bunch of research on my book so what comes out in my talks is basically a lot of the research i've been doing from the book uh and, and and talking about that stuff and that's not what people often expect to talk about um but in my experience is the most important stuff so yeah i mean i kind of hope that people will come and be excited by some of this stuff and be inspired. I mean, the most I can hope is that people come away with a bunch of ideas for things they can try out. That's what I really hope. But, you know, people are not necessarily going to get what they come for. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I've, one of the things I want to do is say sorry to the people who didn't get what they were expecting <laughs> right. out of the talks. But maybe they got something that they can use. What do they say? You didn't get what you asked for, but you got what you needed. Right. Um, maybe. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, well, and then just to, to segue straight into your conference that you're working on, um, FlowConf uh, is obviously something that's related to this topic. Yeah. Uh, but when is it? Where is it? Okay, so this year it's uh, the week of Labor Day, uh, 3rd of September and 4th of September in San Francisco. Uh, you go to flowcon.org. Uh, flowcon.org. Flowcon.org. Okay. And... Uh, my fabulous British accent. <laughs> <laughs> well, with a W. Yes. F L O W C O N dot org. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea of the conference is to explore the whole range of stuff that goes into building great products and services. So mm -hmm. we talk about UX, we talk about product development, we talk about you know deep dive on technical topics, talk about culture, we talk about all those things. And the idea is to emphasize the fact A that it's a cross functional activity. So, you know, we don't have a developer track and a UX track mm -hmm. and a ops track because that kind of goes against the whole principle, which is right. that we all have to work together and we explore all the different aspects that go into creating great products. Yeah, the developers need to know more about the business, business, or the needs and empathy, have more empathy with what the business needs and the business needs to understand what they're asking. So everybody needs to kind of... Get empathy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, that, and that's absolutely right. I mean, my personal experience, I, I wanted to design a conference that reflects our industry as I want it to look, not, not as it looks right now. And I also kind of wanted to think about, you know, what makes a great conference. When I go to a conference, I often will attend topics that I don't know very much about so that I can just get my mind blown. Right. Um, I really enjoy that experience. So I kind of wanted to go to a conference where you could see a bunch of things that were related to what you do but not directly related, so tangentially related, and get an idea of how all this stuff fits together to create a bigger picture. Because again, one of the things about Lean is, you know, you can't just optimize for your particular part. You've got to think about the whole and think about the high level objectives of what you're doing. So, you know, it's important to think about all these other things and how they fit together and, as you say, create empathy for all those different people and, and what they're trying to do. So the conference is focused on that and on real stories of people doing real things. Um, in difficult so, situations. September 3rd yep. and 4th, San Francisco, San Francisco flowcon.org. Yeah, and if you register before May the 30th, there's an early bird, so you get it cheap. Great. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me. Pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks. User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way. Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at ugtastic.com.